promise everything I say will be the truth. <laughs> everything. Let's start at the beginning. I was, uh, I think, probably in fourth or fifth grade, and I could draw funny pictures of everybody. They would stop me when I'm walking down the street and uh, to and from school and I draw pictures. But what brought me my first taste of fame was uh, drawing the principal of the school when they pass out the report cards. So this was uh, a nun. I, I won't say her name because the picture was very, very demeaning. But I would put fangs on the nun and everything, and all the kids would laugh. And, and that was when I first got the idea to do this for a living. So the next year I did my comic strip, and at nine years old I was a sensation. Oh no, I don't think that is how it happened. I was about 14 or 15. I got the idea to draw comic strips, like the newspapers, and. I would try to make them funny, but uh, nobody really laughed at those. So from the time I was 16 until the time I was 30, I would send at least one submission to somewhere every month. That was my goal. So by the time I was 30, I had a, a rejection slips, thousands, of, literally thousands of rejection slips. But luckily, I, I did a comic strip based on an employment agency, which luckily, double luckily, I happened to be running. So I was I finally did something based on my experience, and it was called Mr. Tucker. I mailed it to the uh, Field Syndicate, which uh, was the Sun Times, and luckily, third luckily. They had just hired a new editor, and he didn't know he wasn't supposed to hire nobodies. So I came up with the idea of two fat people that lived in a basement with no money, which would be forever, people like that. So I called that Willie and Ethel, and that really was a hit. And then after that I did Porterfield, a business feature, which I had 15 years background, and then Baffle. Richard Pryor said that this was a key to my success, I think, because he said that there's something funny about everything. It's just the way you look at it. And so I believe that, and that is true. It's just the jokes are just taking a different point of view about every single thing there is. So that made me realize it was an unlimited thing there. I think that's the best description thing there. Every joke I write, there's some truth to it. Like when I ask anyone to help me with, I do a comic strip, Cats with Hands. Tell me something true about a cat, you know, and then I'll make a joke out of it. And if I find out it's not true, then that person I put on a list. In the process, the most important thing in writing a joke is to be in a place where you can't fall asleep. So I can't write at home. This is really true because it's an abstract thought. You're, you're going, it's like very close to dreaming. So I would go walking. And one of the reasons I left Chicago uh, for Lake Geneva was you could walk 26 miles around the lake. So about three, four days a week, I would walk all the way around that lake, and it would force me to work at least eight to 10 hours a day because I'd get halfway around the lake without writing anything, but because I know that I would have at least four hours to write jokes on the way back. So, so that was my process of forcing myself to work in a pleasant surrounding.